So here we are in uh, Brattleboro, Vermont, and my name is Chad Mathrani, and I operate a construction company called Vermont Natural Homes. This is the, our own home here, and it's a timber frame straw bale building with a southern wall made out of double stud wall and dense pack cellulose. One of the main goals of this home was to show that we could build high performance in a very healthy manner with really high indoor air quality as well as high comfort on the inside. We have our straw bale wall assembly here and our wood framed aluminum clad triple pane windows from Clearwall. And we used a combination of things to get from our exterior uh, wind barrier, which is clay plaster, lime stabilized clay plaster actually, to the window itself. And so we had a couple of transitions that we had to make. So we used the Contiga Exo tape, which is a, I believe sold as a a window tape integrating into masonry structures. And so we felt like it, it could be a good fit. So we taped the wood framing into the plaster and floated that exo tape in the middle of our, our base coat of lime stabilized clay plaster. Once the windows went into the bucks, we insulated the uh, cavity between the framing and the window and then used Tescon Vanna to tape from directly from the aluminum cladding across that gap to the Contiga EXO, making an airtight seal from the window frame into our clay plaster. For our sill pans, we were able to use the EXTO seal, which was the formable sill flashing from ProClima, and that was really nice stuff to work with. Again, we taped it to the EXO, which is floated into the plaster, but it was, it was brilliant. It really stuck. Um, we were able to make the corner just easy by pulling it around the corner. It was really, um, it, it wasn't even an apples to apples comparison to anything else on the market today. And I don't know that I'd, I'd go back to using any of the other products that are out there. Um, it really was night and day. So in a straw bale wall assembly, we have a fairly large wall and I wanted to connect my air barrier from the top of the concrete wall underneath the straw bale wall assembly and into the inside. And that was primarily because our floor deck is, is sheathed in pine boards. So I couldn't rely on a, on a plywood subfloor to tape to, to be airtight. Using the Contiga HF to seal this spline of Mento, sealed that to the sill membrane and to the concrete, ran it up the rim joist, underneath the straw bale wall assembly and turned it up on the inside and connected that inside to our, our clay plaster on the inside, as well as connecting it to the clay plaster on the outside. So it was a little bit of a tricky transition to get our air barrier uh, continuous and tight while using, uh, while using pine boards and not, not being able to rely on, on plywood. That was part of our design aesthetic. The hardest part about straw bales is that the, the air barrier is the clay plaster. And when we have a wood structural frame, we have to negotiate between wood and plaster. And they, they move at different rates. So we ended up with using a lot of the, uh, the ProClima products for transitions, essentially. So moving from the, the window lintel here, using a DB plus membrane to get across the lintel, which is insulated uh, with mineral wall comfort board in the framing space, so two inch board in the space between the two by, and then transitioning using the uh, Contiga FC tape from the DB plus paper into the clay plaster. And that was really nice and slick transition. It really, uh, it worked well, it was easy to do, it was very fast, uh, much faster than our, our older straw bale techniques of, of working with Tremco and Homo and things like that. Here the transition was very similar to, to the windows we were looking at earlier. They're installed using uh, steel fitting straps, screwed to the frame, and taped and air sealed in with the Tescom Profil, which was pretty, pretty handy and pretty nice to have the, the different sets of, of release paper to get a real nice crisp line that didn't intrude on the frame of the, the door. That's our wall assembly on the west, north, and east. And on the south, we went with a double stud wall on dense pack cellulose. And the primary 
reason for doing that was to reduce the depth of the wall assembly so that we could get as much natural light in as we could through the south. The straw bale walls have a, a much deeper cavity and do sort of restrict some of the light. So we, we chose a thinner wall assembly that would have the same R value, which is R30. So on the south wall, we have an eight inch double stud wall and Solitex Mento Plus on the exterior, dense pack cellulose behind it. We did blow from the outside and patch the, the holes used to blow the cellulose in using the Tescon Vanna 150 cut into uh, small repair patches. It's battened with one inch lumber on the outside, which kept this uh, in place really nicely. We didn't have any issues with, with really packing these cavities full. The rain screen cladding will go on top of this battening and it will be clapboards directly on top of this with no further sheathing. So this is a, a sheathing less wall assembly, which I was pretty excited to try out and had my reservations at first, but after, after working with it, uh, it's re I'm really psyched about it. So in keeping with uh, airtight construction and best practice, we wanted to keep as many of the services out of the, uh, the wall assembly as we could. Here we installed the service chase inside of the air barrier. So the clay plasters are air barrier here and put a service chase the depth of a typical steel junction box, um, which allowed us to wire and keep our wiring, you know, inbound so that we weren't, we weren't messing with our air barrier and there wasn't, you know, in the, in the event of remodels or things like that or changing fixtures or anything like that. We wouldn't have the issues of digging into the air barrier and having to repair and fix that. These are airtight boxes that have been sealed to the DB Plus air barrier using the EcoCole uh, latex adhesive. And where the wires come up through the back of the airtight box, because we all know airtight boxes aren't really actually airtight, we hit the, the Romex wire that comes through with a, a dab of silicone. Um, Try to keep silicone off the job because the propylene stuff and silicone don't really like each other too much, I'm told, but um, in spots where we were uh, attaching plastic and Romex, we did use silicone. We have for our heat recovery, we use the Lunos decentralized heat recovery ventilation. And I was really excited to try this. I'm, I'm really not a fan of ductwork in any way um, in terms of the health of the air coming into the house and, and long-term maintenance of those ducts. So I was really excited to try these. And I, the installs quick, they went in quick. We've got four units all together in the house and one ego in a bathroom. We're gonna use door undercuts to get mixing throughout the house. I'm excited to see how this all works once the electrical is actually hooked up and these units are running. We want this home to be an example of, of something that can last and stand for at least a couple hundred years switch away from the model of 30-year housing and move to something that people can pass down through the generations and really make a difference in the, in the low energy usage of, of our housing stock.